All right, hey folks, how y'all doing? Uh, oh cool. Um, oh, I should have closed all this stuff down. Start stream, start music, I did all that. Uh, domain names, let me see what's going on here. Okay, I think I got all that stuff. I should have, uh, all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our checklist for starting stuff, which I followed, which is a good idea. I'll get rid of this. And this, not what that was. That was for the check boxes. Wait a minute. Does that work? Is that how you comment stuff? Because those check boxes. The right size. Oh, that's this. Infotech. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I don't need. There you go. I don't need that class. Right. Yeah, they're still there. Okay, and also that means I don't need class RC here. So I'm going to get rid of that. Copy. Like I said, this is just going to be packing around, doing whatever. Um, Make sure it's still there. Cool. Uh, I didn't turn on the fan. I might regret that. But I, I, so this is the checklist I go through when I fire up um, a Twitch stream to try and make sure I do stuff right. And the one that I want to do here is. Actually, so I've got two things that I want to do. I don't want to put these in the descriptions because, you know, whatever. Um, so a while ago, so this cat was, who I don't know, Shelby Spies. Um, should I buy a .dev domain for $115 and fire talking about my full name, uh, which I can appreciate. Uh, am I distracting myself with claps? Yeah, what, like, it's pretty funny. So, uh, oh, actually, you know what I need to do? I'm going to turn on the fan because it is a little hot. How do I do Shelby Speed? S-H-E-L-B-Y-S-P-E-E-S. S-H-E-L-B-Y-S-P-E-E. I hope this is not porn. Developer advocate, dog mom, etc. Cool. Powered by Hugo. Oh, I got a Hugo site. That's what I'm working on. Cool. You go, Shelby. I think I already followed Shelby. Yep. Uh, so, uh, yep, fan time. I've been sitting here all day. It's been fine. It's been a little hot, but not too bad. But now that I'm, well, I don't know if the stream actually fires up more heat on these things. I don't think it would. I think it's just doing the thing makes it a little more of a thing. I need like a, a lower low setting on my fan. Uh, I've got one of those little vortexy fans I can turn on, but it hums. Uh, I could just point it to move some air. So we're going to do this under people, other people. Feedback is a gift. Cool. Uh, so anyways, uh, she, because it's she, her, um, was, was asking about this if she wanted to get a .dev domain, and that reminded me that um, actually I already have this up. 
uh, names out, whatever. So I didn't realize it was so long ago, but in 2015, um, I scraped a web page and got all the Allen dot whatevers that you could get uh, at that point and the prices for them. So I looked it up and I want to do that again. And actually, let me run this off to the side for a second. And just make sure. Yeah, this is cool. So I just went to hover to look for this. And I was trying to do Allen.1 to see if I could get that. And I, I might have actually bought that if I could, um, but it's taken because there's uh, Tron Allen 1 um, is the um, Alan Bradley's character. Uh, the He became Tron, where he was, the, his inside was Tron. So uh, I wanted to. I wanted to get that because also it'd just be cool. Like I'm Alan One. Um, I think it was that. But so Alan One isn't available. Bummer. Oh, well, I yeah, I, I don't need to buy it. I've got plenty of domains. Um, but so then I started looking, and I wanted to see. I wanted to. Re, so what I want to do is redo that list, um, and just see. I'm not really going to do a comparison. I don't think. But I just want to like make another version of it. Um, so, ooh, failed load resource. That was not happy. I figured what I'd do is just write a quick little script to pull those out, or hopefully a quick little script to pull those out. Um, a React model portal, uh-oh. The question is, here's main, look up. Results look up. We still in there? Yeah, okay. Um, media services, look at all this junk. Data props, see I don't know, this is where I don't know what all this stuff does. I mean, like, like it looks like it's sending a JSON object. But it's weird that it's got quotes and then it's got quotes inside of quotes, like that Seems weird. Um, oh, also, so I'm doing new stuff with the music. I've got a whole bunch of licensed music, but I'm just playing it. We're just letting it go. I've got like 500 songs. And I haven't really vetted them yet. And now I'm gonna think too much about it. So I just want some background stuff, whatever. This will be fine, but if it gets like, if it draws my attention, I'm gonna knock it down and remove it from the playlist. All right, we're just gonna grab this for now. Copy the HTML. Um, let's start a new thing here. Just throw all that in. Oh, look at that. What column are we on? Column 108,163, okay. Uh, maybe we should go see if we can dig in. A little closer to the columns. So div hidden Actually, footer. Div 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 div. New header. Section. Results. Extra results. So is this? Yeah. So there's results, and here's extra results. Extra results looks like a good idea. Results left, results right. Let me just look down. So I think we can just do everything on results left. That goes all the way down. So down here, and it does. Results gets us a table. And there's a whole bunch of stuff. Cool. Uh, so we're going to cap capture this. Copy the HTML. Whoops. That was the hotkey to start Spotify. Uh, how? H9 
smell pretty burnt. Mini span. Um, Cool. Make it easier, parse. Is that JavaScript that did that? Action goes to HTML formatter .html. Okay, so it looks like it's actually doing something and, and posting it. Okay, I was just gonna see if it was like JavaScript in there. I might steal JavaScript. Um, so cool, we've got some HTML. Well, that's kind of cool over here. Nice little wave to it. I guess these are where it has section breaks. Uh, how loud is that? Not too loud, I don't think. Uh, cool. So, oh, this is gonna be trickier than it was the first time. Uh, hmm. Not sure I want to get into this right now, but I'm here, so I might as well. Uh. Row enter. So you could split on. Well, let's try this. Python. Whoops. Python HTML parser. Something soup. Isn't that the one? Beautiful soup. What does beautiful soup do? Plain get it to Yeah, yeah. Okay, but it looks like simple HTML. So one of the funds, class HTML parts of search basic for plain text formatting. Start tag. See, I'm interested to see if I can do this with like built in libraries. I remember Beautiful Soup being really powerful. Um, but I'm curious to see if we can do this. Uh, kind of start so. Handle start tag, handle end tag, handle data. Feed close reset. Get start tag text. Return the text of the most recently open start tag. Okay. Handle start tag. Then we translated layer case. Okay. A. Handle end tag. Tag handle data. Little comment. Declaration pi. Processing instruction. I forgot about processing instructions. Nope, that looks like a pain. Beautiful soup it is. Um, no, oh, super pretty fine. Yeah, so it's probably doing, uh, yeah, 
HTML doc, HTML dot parser. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so I think you can basically just walk down a tree with beautiful soup. Um, let's see what we can do. Uh, so I'm just going to use this little scratch pad again, um, but I'm going to start making folders in it, which makes a lot of sense. Or directories. Um, Alan domains. Domain parsing. New file. Get Alan domains.py. All right. User bin environment Python. Rent world. I just like doing that to make sure I'm good. Because, like, right now I'm not doing the right thing. And I think it's. Control shift R. So, shoot. Uh oh. Shoot. Oh, it's because I'm not over here. Oh. What the hell? Oh, oh, oh. I was doing the wrong thing. Control shift R. There we go. Hello, world. See? Uh, okay. So, the cool thing is, we're in this beautiful environment. If we do. If we're in this beautiful environment, in this virtual environment, which is also beautiful. Uh, so from BS for, so I'm going to do this. Am I going to do this TDD? Um, hmm. That's an interesting question. Uh, I'm gonna try and do this TDD because I'm gonna I'm keep I'm trying to rebuild those muscles. Um, so uh, get Alan domains test up high. Use of environment Python import unit test. And this is where I go back to my unit test stuff. Running unit tests. Where's my single where I do this? Okay, yeah, I did that. Um, basic script, where, okay, so I don't have a good skipping unit test. There we go. Uh, running unit test, nope. Unit test. So I'm gonna rename this. I want that up top when I do unit test, or close to up top. Um, just so that way when I do, when I search for pi, Unit test. Wait. Why didn't it come up top? Oh well, whatever. It's fine. Um, so, anyways, we got this class domain test unit test test case. Define test um, tone. I'm just gonna get the thing to go. See, I like, one thing I do like about PyCharm is I would have forgotten to put that self in. I always forget that. Um, self, assert true. Uh, and I'm just gonna do this a little bit. What's the best, what am I gonna call that? Um, GD dot, or GAD, get Alan domains dot um, test. So we want to assert that that's true. That's not going to run right now. We're going to get, oh, aha. Uh -huh. If name, so again, I'm doing 
the Sandy Met style uh, shameless green, but then also one step away from green. So I'm just doing really small increments of stuff. Um, how do you run? You test up main. Test up main. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna be running stuff pretty constantly to figure out what's going on. See, this shouldn't have worked. What I do differently? Uh. Oh, ah, uh, see, I know what's going on. I'm running the wrong file. I need to do this file. There we go, test failed. That's what we want to see. Oh, was this happening the other day and I just didn't notice it? This test failed one? I don't remember seeing that at all. Uh, I'm just gonna do this, run this. Test failed. Yeah, see this doesn't, why is this doing a different thing than this? Oh, I've got something expanded here. Scroll to end, soft route. Restore default layout. Was that too? No. Alright, I'm gonna. This song's a little too. Not the right thing. And so the other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some minutes to get this. Uh, to actually drop this song because what I did what I did is I put the full all the songs I've got about 500 in the mix and now I'm just yanking out the ones that I'm not digging uh, especially if I can find them this isn't a bad song it's just not for not what I want for the background right now so how Where does this come from? Show ignored. Rerun failed tests. Why is this behaving differently? test okay but why is all this changing what the hell show ignored no nope. fail test this is great I want this because this gives me a big thing right here, right? Because if I do true and run, it gives me a test passed. Look at that. See, that's what I want. Why wasn't this working? I have no idea what's going on there. Um, test passed.
I don't know why that's going on. Get on domains underscore test. That's underscore test. Oh, well, uh, we'll have to dig into that later. I don't understand. I was hoping I could figure that out, but this is great. Um, I was complaining about that in the last feed is that this stuff is always red, even when it's passing and it should really be blue. Um, green, sorry. Uh, as a visual indicator of what's going on, but like this is perfect. Uh, I'm just gonna call it GAD tone. Make sure we're on the right thing. Yeah, so I tested that. Okay, cool. So now, now I just want to get this to pass. So, um, did it give me test results? Name GAD is not defined. Okay, I kind of wish it would give me the last thing there. Uh, if I rerun that, what's it gonna do? Yeah, I, I wish it would give me this. So GAD is not defined, right? So now I need to define GAD. And the way we were to do that is Well, I guess it's actually gonna be get Allen domains. Get Allen domains has no attribute tone, right? So I'm just gonna go through this. And now this should get us passing. Nope, did not get us passing. Oh, none is not true. Return true. Hey, we're passing. Okay, good. So now I just, I'm going and like, this is super simple stuff. It's easy to get set up. I, I'm just as, not as used to doing this. And also I just, I like the process of actually practicing the effort of just doing one little thing at a time. Helps me kind of figure out where to go. It's a little bit of a warm up. Um, so now what I need to do is uh, I want to try and start I want to try and start at the end of what I'm looking for. Um, and this is, this one's a little complicated. Um, Cause what I'm looking for, I think, bye bye Tron. So I want, I want a domain name. Okay, so here's here's the first thing I can do. I know the first thing I want is I want to I want to send this text in by allencenter.com. Nope, I want to send the one that has an Allen on it. Allen Builder. So I want to send this chunk in. And what I want to get back, well, and so I, I can actually do it even even more. Um, generic than that. So test. I'm just gonna call it response right now. And what I want, so I got to figure out, do I want to get? I probably want them as a list. So. Target list or dict. I think it's a dict, right? Or it's list. I can't remember what the Python term is. So it's gonna be I want Allen Builders and I want thirty four ninety nine.
and it's a self assert equal get Allen domains result eventually we'll pass something to that but again right now I'm just going for the easy for like this the lowest easiest thing I can get my head around and this is the gonna be a shameless green thing um, so that passed I mean sorry that failed because get down domains doesn't have anything called result so now I'm just gonna do this uh, result pass and now we're gonna get a different error message I really wish it would go all the way to the bottom busted there during handling bugs after another exception occurred Oh, interesting. Uh, anyways, let's just return this. And now we're green again. So super simple to get there. I'm going to take out, now, now I've got another test running, I'm going to take out my tenant test. So our test is passing, cool. Uh, and now what I want to do is feed that, um, I want to feed that the text to actually work on, to, to actually pull out. So, uh, we're just going to call this blob right now, um, HTML blob. And then I'm just going to shove all that stuff. for the full div right in there. And now we're gonna pass the blob here. And this is gonna break again because it's not expecting, uh, it's not expecting an argument we gave it an argument. So cool, no problem. HTML blob. And this should get us green again. And we're green again. Ah, oh, except it's red. It should be green. Um, so now we've got now we've got our framework to work with, and that's that's one of the things that I really like about uh, about this approach is I'm not trying to jump through stuff and get stuff running. I'm just taking itty bitty little steps, um, and, and I'm staying kind of one step away from green. So I'm not trying to make a whole big jump and doing a whole bunch of stuff and having to kind of backtrack through it. Um, so now we can actually work on sucking out. Um, sucking out the, the values that we want to have. Uh, and this is where we're going to get the beautiful soup. Got your blog. So this is going to explode because we don't have it installed. No module name be this for it, right? So we've got our terminal. Hit install. BS4. Wow. Self contained. Look at that. Err, has. It's one little thing. Um, but we run it, we're green again. Now we get to figure out how to use Beautiful Soup. <laughs> uh, soup, Beautiful Soup, Parser. Okay. Here's some simple ways to navigate the data structure. Data, data, whatever. Soup title. Find all. And just, just to walk you through this, kind of what I'm thinking now, now that the other thing is now that I've kind of walked through a couple of these things, I've got a better idea about how I'm gonna approach some of this stuff. And I think what I'm gonna do is split on rows here. Cause it looks like that'll get me most of the stuff that I want or split on this class row. Um, and pull those out, but I may, I may actually be able to say that I'm not going to worry too much. Actually, I'm not going to worry about that at all. I was thinking how, what I might do there, but that's uh, it, one more step away. So right now I just need to parse this stuff out, um, and, and go from there. So beautiful soup, uh, HTML doc. So soup equals beautiful soup, HTML doc and HTML parser. I wonder what that HTML parser is.
I guess that's just the name of the parser that you're using. And then I'm just gonna run that and see if it works. Yep, passed. See what that is. Yeah, there you go. Pretty fine code. And that's just that's just messing around. Uh, but so we got soup. We got soup working. So that's cool. Uh, now what do we need to do? We need to figure out how to get to extracting all URLs, find all A's. Soup. The title. P, the class, a find all. Okay, so let's look at our HTML. So we got a pie charm. So if we do this, span class, regular class, span class. So is this, hopefully it's valid. Yeah, span and type of span, so interesting. So if we just do the spans, if we just find all spans, what does that get us? So for span in soup find all span uh, so that does that work okay yeah it works print span oh there you go Dot text. <laughs> okay, so that's most of the way there. Um, so what if we do this? Spans. And actually, I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get better at debugging here. Spans equals soup. Find all span. And I'll set it, can I set a breakpoint here? No, it's gotta be on a line. See, the trick is it's gotta be on a line of a thing. Cause like what I really wanna do is, is see this. But in order to see this in the debug, I have to start it there, which is not awful. Oh, you gotta do debug. Uh, what's debug? Control shift D. Control D, Control Shift D. Now see this is debugger, variables not available. Of course it didn't work. The breakpoints. See, I, I don't have enough of, of a idea what's going on here. Um with code. So why didn't it break there? Can I break in front of this? I don't know why my breakpoints aren't working. Okay. Back to what I know. Uh, print spans So if I print spans, it should just be the list of stuff. I gotta call this. Oh, wait a minute. Is that why? 
I wasn't running... I was running the wrong file. Let's try this. Debug over here. Now we're, now we're going. Yeah, so Spans has... three spans in it, or sorry, um, yes, yeah, so this is doing everything. That's cool. Yeah. So the, in the environment spans has is spans has is, um, source, it's a list and it's got zero. I don't know that, that, that source. That's interesting. Um, but zero, one, and two, so there's the list for us, and here's the elements that are in it. And so, can you stop that? Yeah. If we make spans zero dot text, well, I'm just gonna print that because I don't know how to get to it with a debugger. Like, I, I know that that's, I'm pretty sure that's what I want. Um, so do you stop? You come here, you run. There's Allen.builders, that's what we're looking for. So once once I've loaded in the spans, then I should be able to drop this in here. And we should still pass. Test passed, good. Uh, what I wanna know is why I got 34.99 for, oh, okay, I see. So there's two spans here. The inside text for both of them is the same. Um, the question is, which one is the one that just has uh, that just has the 34.99. I want to I want to focus down on that. I'm guessing it's the second one. Or span and spans. Print span dot text. Yep. So the the first span it catches this one first, which makes sense. And so the inside text of that is a combination of this and this. Because it's just all the text elements mushed up. And then the second one is just is this span, which only has that in the text. So just to really make sure I'm focused on the right one, I want to grab this for my name and this for my text. Or for my, uh, not value, um, price. And so that should be two. Test passed. There we go. Okay, beautiful soup. You're pretty awesome. Uh, save that. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of this now because we don't need it to look what's going on. Run that. Test passing. So, real short, simple steps. Got there. Um, and that's got, I don't need, this is called frolic. Doesn't sound like a very frolicky thing to me. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. how do I spell frolic? There it is. Thank you, but no thank you. Get Alan Demands, okay. May I N S? Okay, yeah. Um, so this is cool. That little that little piece of code gets us for that. Now, so how now it gets a little trickier. How do we get So there's row inner. Oh, this is also different. I'm not going to worry about these right now. These are different. I may just copy and paste those. So it looks like 
I'm just eyeballing it, but it looks like everything is a div class row. Or rows with a row in there. And then row enter. Does this have row enter up there? Yeah, row enter. Whoops. Name. Fan class regular. Pro. Oh, see, this is different. Ah, this is different. The other one had two spans in it. See, this one has two spans. This one only has one span. So we could just do the outside span. I'm going to do that for now. Then we'll watch it. Because it should be... Well, we'll see if at some point it throws something else in there. Um, again, some of this is just experimentation to figure out what's going on. Like I said, I haven't vetted this music. Um, now, how, what's going to be the right way? So I'm just going to throw this entire file. Or this, yeah. So this file isn't the whole, isn't all the HTML. It's just, um, it's just one element. I, I don't know if, um, I'll just save that as source to HTML. Is that automatically show up? Yeah, there you go. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is write a test and have the test fail. And I'm not sure. What I want that to be. So I think I'm just going to make a, a list of lists. Def test final finale. So um, my target is going to be well. So okay, so trying to think through this. What I'm what I'm going to have is a list of lists. And so in the first list um get on domains. So we're just going to do this to start with. So Get Allen domains is going to fire something back to us. And the thing that we're going to have it fire back to and we want to get to, I'm just going to say is allen.com right now. That's not really what we're going to get to, but this is just me getting stuff to work. So that didn't work. Why did that work? Test failed. There we go. So again, get the, get the test failing. Module object is not callable. What? Oh. Final. Test failed, doesn't have anything called final. So we're just gonna put final in here. F-I-N-A-L, right. Pass. Now it doesn't equal album.com, right. Return, so I, you know, I could, I could jump through that and kind of do all that in one step. But again, this is just kind of the, the practice of doing a thing. Okay, so now, what I want to return is a list of lists. And so what I'm going to want is the first, the first list, which is list zero, and the first element of that list, of that first list to be allen.com. So this is going to explode. What does that say up there? Oh, it's not equal to A. Okay, so it's pulling. It's pulling the A out. Okay. Expect the actual. Oh, okay. So I'm actually doing this backwards too. So I, for some reason, I can't remember if this is the one that feels different for me. 
But I kind of, I kind of, ex my brain always wants to reverse those two with the expected and then the actual, no, with the actual, I can't remember, whatever. We're going to flip those just for now because expected is Allen.com and what we actually get is A, which is kind of a surprise, but that's okay. Because now what I need to do is see if I can just do this, which is to return a list with a list in there with Allen.com. And that passes. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this up so I can return it as a variable. Return list. Okay, so is this... So th these are gonna be coupled. And I'm not sure if I want that. I mean, at the end, I need to produce the output. But this is this is going to be tightly coupled because in order for me to get this, I'm going to have to parse it through the result. So I'm wondering if there's a way I can do that. Yeah, so actually, the way that I can do that is test split. And then I can just do so this I'm going back and forth here. I'm not really sure where this is gonna end up. But I'm letting the test kind of get me there. Um, so I'm gonna drop that for now. Now what I think I want. is a row. Right, does it make sense to split those back? So like you, you would do this, I could do the split off and just grab those. But like at that point, am I testing, I'm kind of just testing beautiful soup at that point. So, hmm, yeah, because I want to, what I'm trying to figure out is if I want to have like a big list of lists or if I can, if I'm just going to go through and process these things down. I think I was going to go through and process them down. So I think that means I don't really need to, to add another test in here because I'd just be testing beautiful soup. So, um, if name equals main, what are we gonna run? Um, process. Is that a reserved word? run this here. Okay, that works. Um, I still don't know why. Is that because I don't have... No, that's not it. Oh. All right, tests are passing. I run this, I get here. Okay, cool. So, beautiful soup. Oops. File. Open file handle. Um, We 
with open source.html read as HTML file soup equals util soup file. HTML file, right? Is that what it is? Yes. Print. And actually, scoping works there, right? What was that error up top? To kill this card in warning is line 12. Get rid of this warning past the additional features HTML parser. Oh, okay. There we go, no warning. So now I think what I'm gonna just try and do is again I'm not gonna test, I don't want to test beautiful soup. I've got my logic here that's tested. Now I just need to roll through it. And what I can do then is make the determinations about, like I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably gonna end up adding more tests here. Okay, so this is cool. Um, so I'm gonna call these soup rows equals soup find all I'm just gonna guess it's row enter, right? Uh, how do we find classes? I guess we want to do class equals row. Let's just try it. For to row in soup rows print soup row. Why am I? Why is this angry? Should be that? No. Wait. What? Find all. Angry at that, huh? Find all. documentation right now. Oops, let's get rid of this. Turn all the divs. Okay, got all the divs. Not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. We got the classes. Going up. 
beautiful soup find all class. How to find elements by class. Oh, okay. So it wants it in that style. Okay. Um, bah, 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 bah. I like this. Assuming it works. PyCharm. Div with class row enter. Yep, so it's giving us all of the input for the row enters. See again, I could like I could be testing this a little bit, but that would feel like testing beautiful soup. Or it would be super tightly coupled with this test response. I don't know. That's that's a weird like I'm not sure where to draw the line on that one. Whatever. Um, so if we're finding the span, so I should now, so for every row, um, or f yeah, for every soup row, uh, my values, and I'm not worried about names right now. Um, are equal to result supero print my values did not like it None type object is not callable. Uh, crap. So yeah, this is where parsing stuff gets to be a pain. Um, So, hang on a second. Just, you know, blah, let's just grab this and throw it back in there. I just want to see, I want to make sure this is talking right. Rent, er, my, oops, here we go. So it's given us all the right stuff there. Now, why isn't Supro none object is not callable? Uh, so it should. Okay, what's going on here? And it's on the first one. Right? We print the first one. I just want it to bail after we print the first one. And it's getting the first one. So why?
Non-object is not callable. HTML blob. All right, let's... All right, I'm running this, right? I'm running the right file? Yes, okay, so... None object is not callable. So blob... I have a feeling I'm doing something silly. So this is definitely the line that's the problem. None object. Beautiful soup, HTML blob. None type is not callable. What the hell? It's not a name collision, is it? No. Somehow it doesn't like... Oh, I wonder if... No, because it's printing... Again, now the debugger doesn't show where my stuff is. Oh, I need a breakpoint. Um, so HTML blob. Is it that it's a beautiful ah it's a beautiful hey hello debugger it's a beautiful soup that's it it's a beautiful soup element or object how do we get Because when it converts it to a string, that's where it's going to none. So how do we get this? Let me stop this for a minute. Hello, debugger. Okay, that is hugely helpful. <laughs> Content equals HTML blob. So it's not, yeah, because it's not really an HTML blob that's coming in. It's not just a piece of text. Because it, it's got all this other stuff into contents. Navigable string, name, price. So here's the row enter. 
The contents are what's inside of it. Okay, so this would get me there. But I'm curious if there's a way to actually get the full string of it. Previous siblings. Strings, GI code. Strip strings. Yield all strings in certain cases, that's how it was. This is all the stuff that's going on under the hood. Text. No, see, that's just the text attributes. How do you get... So I just want to see if we can get... So, actually, let, let's, let's see if we can't make this work to start with. So if I do this... So I need to... One, my test isn't going to work anymore. Because I was sending just a piece of text and I need to send uh, an HTML thing. All right, so now let me kill this. So hang on a second. So I think test failed one. What failed? Spans is not defined. All right, I'm going to come back here. This is a stay one step away from green. And I should have actually, I had to do some experimentation there. Oh, stop, yep, nope, I don't know what's going on. What's going on? List index out of range. Oh, see now, <laughs> here's the problem, is I've gone more than one step away from green and I don't know where I did, oh, here we go. See, I just had to redo all that junk. Stop and rerun. None object is not callable. Okay, because I was on the wrong file. So if I run this, tests are passing. But what I need to do is I need to send this. How are we gonna do that? Um, soup blob, or actually just, yeah, soup blob equals this. And I'm just gonna run something. I'm just gonna constantly run this stuff just to make sure my tests are still passing. I'm not messing with anything. So that's the soup blob. And now if I pass the soup blob over here, now why did that pass? Oh, because I'm blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'm expecting to parse it, but it's already parsed. That's the problem. Here I'm sending a soup blob. Here I was sending text. I still don't understand that why that didn't explode. If we turn that off, what happens? Test failed. Soup is not defined. Oh. Um, string object has it. So it's coming in as a string now. Okay, I gotta back out of this. So again, I've, I've gotten more than one step away from green. Whoops. Okay, so I'm green. So 
what I want to do is I want to put a debugger right here. I want to run this. And when I say run, I mean debug. Soup blob is a string. I don't want it to be a string. Oh, right, 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 right. Duh. And then we're going to add this at the end because we want to be explicit about the parser. And yes, I totally like I could have done this by hand by now, but again, this is exercise. So, all right. So now I expect when we pass this, it'll break. Test failed. None type is not callable. Cool. Um, well, okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna work to get it passing. So again, now I'm just gonna try and get this test to pass. Uh, and so if I debug this, soup blob is now a beautiful beautiful soup object. Oh, that's cool. It gives you the type. That's so nice. Ooh, ASCII spaces. Look at this is all different looking. Children, content. Here's our contents again. And contents one. So that gets us to the row. This, this will do it. But I still want to know, oh, current tag. Tag contents. Is that row in a row? No, that's contents. Never mind. If there's next, next sibling, this is incredible stuff. See, the other cool thing about this is I never would have dug down into this stuff. Now again, it's all right. Protected attributes. Current data, descendants element hidden is self-closing. It's that string, that's what's doing it right there, none type. Yeah. So, all right, we're gonna we're gonna get it to pass. Um, and all we should have to do to get it to pass, actually, is this. I think. Stop and rerun. Boom! Test passed. Because we were trying to we were trying to beautiful soup a beautiful soup object, and it did not like that. So now my tests are passing. And I'm going to call this a soup blob. And I'm going to rename this to soup blob. And there we go. Uh, and also, yeah, okay, so I'm still running that. Right? Right. Um, and now I can get rid of this because we're not sending straight text. Get rid of this for now. So we're passing the soup blob. So now, let's see if this doesn't work. Let's run the right file. There we go. Um, that's pretty cool.
And if we do this, I run this. There is our text. So here's okay. Here's where the two spans are coming in. One of them. The, oh, we'll have to look at that. Uh, okay, cool. So we've got some. Uh, now I've got some stuff to work with. Um, and again, I'm not test. So I'm, I'm not going to try and test all this stuff. Really, the thing I'm worried about is this. Because once I've got this going. This would just be testing beautiful soup um, and making sure that I got the right rows, which you could do, but like that's kind of testing beautiful soup and like it's a well, it's a well tested thing. Um, but what we can do, is that going to open? Yeah. Is we can figure out, oh, why is the style? I don't like doing that. I mean, I guess it's okay. But, uh, so let's figure out what we got going on here. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to put that in its other application because it's easier to switch to. That's the wrong application. There we go. Right, so... Now is actually when tests can come in to play kind of nicely. So I want to drop this sale is the first thing I want to do. And so the way I want to do that is um, now how what's going to be the easiest way to test that? Because I almost want to make a new. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna do this. So instead of trying to mess with this right now, I'm actually just gonna do this to just to get my bearings. Um, Cause it's such a small method. Well, no. Yeah. Um, result two, suit blob, target list. So I want to match this. And let me actually do this this time so it's sitting in the right place. And then, all right, so I'm just going to start there and it's going to explode if I do the right test, right? Because it's not, I don't have result two. So I'm just going to do result two for now. And, and what I'm trying to do here is like, it's, this will make it easier for me to not have to deal with the first one while I'm dealing with the second one. And then I can combine them together. So it gives me a, a way to, to kind of look at this stuff. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the best way to do it, but um, Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump a couple of things here. Like I know that I'm passing a thing, so that's cool. We'll do this. Um, soup blob is not defined. Whoops. So for this one, this is gonna be our blob. Soup blob equals beautiful soup. HTML parser. Right? So we should get a different error now. Yeah, none is not equal to that because we're not passing anything back. So now we're just going to return this. Run. Tester green. Okay. 
I don't know why test pass is one. It should have been two, right? This test is still going, right? That shouldn't. That should fail. Why am not failing? All right. I don't know what's going on. Going on. Was I hitting the wrong key this whole time? I must have been hitting something wrong. Test one of two. Okay. I don't know what I was doing. I must have been running the wrong file somehow. Wait, if you run this file, does it still take? Test pass two. Oh, okay, so I don't like that. It should clear, it shouldn't tell me that when I run this file. Oh, wait. It doesn't. Shit, I don't know. It's working now. I've got two, two tests going. Um. So now what I want is I want to do this, which is going to fail. I want to return this. Again, I'm, this is just shameless green. I'm just doing the, the quickest, dirtiest thing that gets me to a passing test. And now that I've got it, mean business with ink. I can work on... Oh, this is going to be weird if it's all, this is going to be a little tricky, I think. So, do, 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 do. what's going to be the best way to do this? Because it's like, really, so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is... Maybe loop through the spans and find the one that starts with a dollar sign. Uh, first thing we do is just grab the spans again. And then I'm just going to print the spans. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to debug. Oh, I didn't do it on the right line. You do it here. So my spans have that. And that. Oh wait, span tag one, tag two. Oh, weird. And strike through 299. Oh, this is going to be complicated. You know what? I'm going to bail on this. Because it's more... There's way more value
so that's these top two. Well, featured, but they're all kind of the same, aren't they? That that top one just is a little bit different than these other ones. And see the other ones, here's where that tiered pricing comes in thing. Um, so like, I'm gonna have to do extra work just to make this one go because it has all this extra stuff in it. And I'm not sure that's worth it. So like, let me go back here. I want to see. Okay, I gotta. And, and so this is the this is the part where you figure out like where, like where's the value? Because like I can, I can manually do a couple of these, right? Like these top ones, like this. I can just cut that out. The global is here. But when I solve for yeah, so. I'm not going to solve for this one. I'm going to solve for the global and the tiered one because that happens a bunch. Like that's this. Um, Cause again, this is a one off script, so it's not, I don't have to like make it super crazy. Um, but I do want to solve for, for this. Okay. So let's solve for that. So let's find one of those. Actually, is that next one down? Oh, uh, let's find one down here. Does it say tiered? price okay so here's the row um, well actually before we do that we're gonna we're gonna do our shameless green test run here and again I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the music different what I'm gonna do I don't like that it's not bad um, tell you what, I'm going to take a quick break and then come back and tackle this like that. Be right back. Okay, see what we got going on. Um, so we've got this tiered price domain thing we want to kill.
double Hershey kisses to keep the uh, keep the stream going. Oh, nope. Sorry. Do the practice, do the practice, do the practice. So run, tests are passing. One test is passing because we got another one out. So now, make a failing test. Start equal. We're gonna do get domain names. Result three. No, actually, I guess we want expected to be. Um, I'm just gonna do this for now. Again, just going as fast as possible, or just as just kind of chunk through, like. Zoom down to this. Maybe there's a way to do that. Expand all. Expand all. Did that do it? Nope. Um, get domain test no attribute results three. So I come back here. Def result three. Suit blob. Pass. It's not going to like that because. Uh, Needs an argument. Suit blob. We can go ahead and make that. Beautiful soup. HTML parser. And then here, we're going to put our text, which is this. No, oh, I haven't been getting. I haven't actually been making it green. I should've been making it green. I should be making it green in between each one of these steps. Hang on, I need to remove the Cherokee, Cher Cherokee shuffle, Cherokee. The Cherokee shuffle needs to be removed from this particular playlist because it is not the right mood. Yeah, I should be, I'm doing this a little wrong. I should be, um, I should be doing this one step at a time making green. Like I, I'm staying in red. There's green. Each one of those steps I should have, I should have been moving to green each time. Um, that's the practice I'm trying to get into. Uh, again, you can like, I, I know how you can kind of jump through that stuff. Like I just did, like that's easy enough to do but it's the practice of the thing that I'm working on. So, red, green, red, green. Like, because every now and then when you're doing it and you're jumping through, you make a couple steps and all of a sudden everything explodes and you got to figure out where to get back. Um, so the one that we're going to do that's this one, right? is allen.inc for $379 and 99 cents. So we run that, that's gonna crash out. Test fail. Boop. Come back over here, shame is green. Ideally you could have done that back, backwards, but that's cool. Um, so now we got our test working and now we can actually start doing the work. So, uh, actually, I'm going to do this. Return text. Or, nah, I can just leave it there for now. That's fine. Um, so, and this is cool because I can keep, I can keep working up in here and I know that I've got this test passing because I'm just, no matter what I do up here, I'm still just returning these values. So I can test forever and it's always going to work. Um, 
But so I'm just gonna start with the same line that we had up here, put a breakpoint here and debug. I debugged the wrong file. I need to debug from here. Why did that work? Because I took the thing out. Bug. There we go. So Spans now has this. And so let's see. I'm actually, so I don't want to mess with this. But I'm going to pull this out to its own file. So I can just kind of look at this a little bit. I don't know about this one. Yeah, so here's where that span is. This stuff is outside of a span. Okay, that's why it wasn't showing up. Here's the second, and then here's the third span. So here's span one. Two and three, okay. So, in this one, I believe if we were, if we return, so this is gonna, this should fail. Because it sent back the value of that first band, but this time if we, if we change this to two, and, see, and I'm keeping this here because I can always jump right back to. If I completely freak this out, I can jump. I can just jump back to my hard coded thing. But now I've done that, and so now we know that that test is good. Okay. So that's that's how to do that. So that's just an experimental test. And so now what I need to do is figure out how to apply that up here, and easily enough. If I, if I do this, wait, is that right? Yeah, my test still passed. Why is it only one test going? That still concerns me. I don't understand that. Okay, that failed. That passed. My target list is sure this a little differently. Test pass one. Why isn't this testing all of it? Now it's failing. It still says only one test is going. And one test is still passing, even though that is not right. This is concerning. If I click here, still one test is passing. What's going on? If I. Run unit test, for get test, island domain, test, test response. Okay, so this is only testing, when I hit run again, it's only testing that one method. How do I make it test everything? I'm guessing control shift R. I don't like that. I mean, I guess I do like that. It's probably fine now that I know it's doing it. Yeah, even this just tests the one that I did. But if I hit Control Shift R, that's where it's doing everything. Okay. 
try running it. Now it's testing you. I don't understand why sometimes it tests one thing and sometimes it only tests. Is that because I'm in here? Again, one test passed. What is going on with that? Even control shift R doesn't do it. How the hell? I guess you gotta fire it off from the bottom. If I rerun, then it reruns. But if you're in, oh, okay. So if you're in, that's it. okay. That's not awful. If you're in a method, okay, that makes sense. I just this is new. Um, if you're in a method, it only tests that method. So you gotta bounce out in order for it to test the the full set, the uh, full suite. Okay, cool. I learned something new about Python today, or Python PyCharm. Oh. Um, right, if I do that, yeah. And so, hang on, come down here, run it. And then if I hit rerun, it still does everything. So it's only when you fire it in. Okay, I understand now. I got it. So that was, so now the question is, if I just do this through, so if I change result, that's still passing. Everything's still passing, two tests pass. If I send this to result, they both work. So then this can actually go. as a second test here. Um, that's not right. I need to pass the other blob to it. But test result with tiered price. All right, so this is just another another test run on the same thing. But so now when I run this file, nope, when I run this file, everything's cleared out now again. Um, the only one that I think is going to be the problem, ah, here's a sale. And here's a sale. Okay. So there's two sales to deal with. Um, and so I can actually, I can actually nuke this because this is now doing everything for me. I can nuke this and just rerun this. Both the tests are passing. Cool. Uh, I'm going to drop this for now just because it's coming to code and I don't want to mess with it. Uh, cool. Ideally, maybe I'd have those in separate files, but this is fine here. Um, so now the question is, do I, so really easily what I could do is just make my prints out of all this stuff and just manually correct these two. But this is an exercise. So I wanna, I'm, I'm working on this as if that wasn't an option. Um, like this is like doing scales for me uh, in music where it's like, it's the, it's, this is the practice of the thing. So sure. I could do this different ways. I could do this without test. Like I could have, I could have written this script pretty quickly, um, without doing testing. Um, got it going. Cause it's a relatively straightforward thing to do. And I could just run it, look at the output, run it, look at the output, run it, look at the output. And 
it wouldn't have taken that long. Um, I've learned new stuff doing these tests though, and it's just doing the practice of the test. So, by the way, don't take that as an apology for testing or for taking the time. That is an explanation of why I'm doing the thing that I'm doing and how I'm, why I'm doing it and how I'm doing it. So, um, like, whatever. Um, people will, I don't know, I get, I get, I think I'm tired of saying like, ah, oh, people are gonna yell at me for this stuff. Like, that's just what I'm doing. Take it or leave it. But I don't even wanna say that because it's not about the people who it's not for or not about. Um, if you're into this stuff, cool. If you're not, fine. But like, doesn't matter. Uh, and again, that's all dismissive. I don't know. I still gotta figure out how to talk to the internet. Um, but I do want to solve for that. And that was this one. So there's really only two of them. So I'll look at it for a minute. So here's here's what we know we want to have happen. Um, and again, because this because this method is already working, I don't want to try and mess with it while making the other stuff work because I'm going to be red all the time. Like stuff isn't going to work. I'm going to be me messing back and forth. And like, so I need, I need this chunk of code to stay as is for now. Um, so I'm going to work on a completely separate chunk of code. Um, and again, I'm actually going to do, I'm going to try and do this the way that, uh, uh, the, the Sandy Metz way. So test result, I'm just going to call it dev, right? Um, Self assert equals. Uh, we want to have Allen.inc. This is what we're looking for. And that's going to be get Allen domains. Result dev. I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to leave that right now. So this is the the first part. So I'm not gonna worry about sending the stuff to it yet. So I just wanna check and make sure this should fail. And I'm only running one test. I understand what's happening now. So I'm in here, this is cool. Okay. So now I can come here, def results dev return, just the, we know it's gonna be that. The test is gonna fail because we need it to be this. So we're just gonna hack that through. Now we should pass. Now we're passing. Cool. Uh, and so now we can actually do, we can bring up our soup object. Uh, HTML parser. That's going to be this one. I'll just move that one. Uh, all right, because this is the sale. That's the one. So now we've got that, and we're going to pass that, and this is going to fail because we're sending a thing and it doesn't expect the thing to be sent, but then we can do this, we can make sure that works, we're good, green, uh, cool, okay, so now we've got our, now we got our framework set up, right? Um, this is good, I like this practice of doing this thing. Um, Basically, I've got my input and output verified and confirmed with each other. And so now I get to mess with the stuff in the middle. Um, so again, this is probably going to get us started. And I'm going to go here and using the new skills that I've learned of creating a dev thing or a debug thing. A debug, where does that go? It says it, it's over on the side of the screen that you can't see. So it says unit tests for get Allen domain, domain tests, test result dev. Okay, so that's, if I hit that, cool. Um, that's gotta go. It just did a weird and like that's not for me.
rest of it's not awful. Yeah, so we've got, so in this one, the values that we need, tag one and tag two. Span, 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 span. Um, Yeah, so I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna worry about this this first result right now. I'm only worried about this one. So I just wanna get this one working. Um, and so it looks like if I do uh, list item zero and list item three in here, it should go. Um, stop that for a second. I'm gonna do zero here just to start. Oops, that's failed. Oh, dot text, right? So good, I didn't do anything too crazy. Why the code of the class of warning of the file? Did I do something wrong? No, it's a comma there. There you go, test passing. So I'm just doing one at a time. Just to, you know, as much as possible avoid confusion. So if I run that one, test failed. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, one of them has a comma and the other one didn't. Ah, that's weird. Did I type that in manually? I typed that in manually. There we go, test pass. So now we've got the data going. And so now the trick is to figure out how to get these two things to work together. Um, and one of them I need to hit the second one and one of them I need to hit the third one. But instead of doing the specific value or the specific location, because it changes, like I need to have some way to um, basically, I, have, I need to have some way of making an identification to figure out if I need to do slot two or slot three. Or, and like, there's probably a way to do that by like looking if there's a sale or looking at whatever. But somehow you have to do some type of comparison. Um, and like, possibly, well, actually, yeah. The way I was going to do it was set up a regex for this, but let me try something else. Um, Cause in the spans, number two is sale. I'm going to, I'm going to run off the idea right now that that is how the other one works. I'm not gonna actually go look at it right now. I'm just gonna like, cause I'm, I'm thinking about this programmatically and like, I'm just gonna solve for this one right now. Um, and then we'll, cause this is the test I'm working on. And then once I've done that, I'll run the rest of it and see if it all works. But so what I could do is, if, Span two text equals sale return span three. So I just want to I want to see if this passes my test. Test passed. Cool. I just hit run there too, right? Yeah, test passed. And so now I think, cause now I think I'm actually ready to test up here. Cause I have this logic now and I can, I should be able to apply this logic back up here. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is, how am I going to do that? See what this, this is where I, I struggle a little bit on the best way to kind of 
make these moves. Um, Cause the, like, I know what I want to do, like, right. So I want to, that's going to go up here and then there's going to be an else that goes both two, but I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way to do a test run of that to have it be tested. And I guess the easiest thing is just, is literally to just fire it up. So this should still work. If we run all of our tests. I have three tests now. Oh, that's with the tiered price. Okay, right, right. So that's... It's actually called result. Um, and so now, if I point this over, test still passed. Cool. So that's it. Uh, and I should be able to get rid of this. And if I run this file, hopefully we don't see any sales. We just see our names with our prices. And that certainly appears to be the case. And like we could actually write a test here to parse all of this stuff. Oh, that that's actually interesting. Why not? Why not actually do that? Um, nah. What you could do is you could just you could make another test here that. Because uh, we're going to process and process, and so process is just printing. So we should actually return stuff. If we're returning this, you could make a test that actually just looked at that and started everything. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the other thing I could do is I could I could take out global Allens. I could I could start anything that wasn't with an Allen. Um, but I think I'm just going to rip those out. Uh, you could keep playing with this a little bit. So what would you do? Oh, that hasn't been too loud. It's probably been too loud. It's not a bad one, but not right now. Um... Trying to figure out how much I want to do this. Yeah, because what, so the large test that you could do would be, and this, this actually would have been one that would have been a way to test the kind of the, the full application which would have been just to, and we can actually, so I'm going to write that test now. Now that I'm here, I can figure out how to have done that, but I couldn't have done that first. I needed to start with a, a particular thing to get there. Um, sometimes that happens, but so def test full ride. I'm not using good names, whatever. Um, so yeah, so you want to pull, so you pull the data and this is more than I want to get into right now. Um, but so the, a, a way to do this or a better way to have done this too, is you actually get the process of sucking in the data as its own, as its own thing. And then you pass that data, for example, into process and then have it go there. And so this is, it gets a little bit of your, of your testing connected things. Um, but if you send it, if you sent the the raw string or the raw data into process, uh, let beautiful suit pick it up from there, then you can test it from over here. And then you could just look at the output and you could do regex matches to basically say, does the first 
uh, or the zeroth index always start with Alan dot something, and then does the other one start with uh, dollar sign and a number, um, and then look at that list, and that way you can verify the fact that it always does the output. But of course, you didn't. We actually wouldn't want to do that as your first thing necessarily because it's. But it could be a fallback test. So that's kind of a. Um, an integration test versus a unit test, um, which wouldn't be a bad integration test. Um, but like right now, it, that's that's more than I'm going to get into. Um, but I am going to take these out, uh, the ones that don't start with Allen, just to make those quick and easy to do. So I'm not I'm not going to yeah I'm not going to make an integration test, but I am going to I am going to finish making these things do the thing that I want. Um, and so, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with another one. Um, def, test, result, dev. I could have, guess I could have kept dev there. There we go. Um, self, Third equal, I guess I'm gonna go with none. Get down domains, result, dev, nothing. So if we run this, it should fail, whoops, no. There we go, failing test. Because we know what's going on there. Uh, result. See, I actually don't know how I'm going to do this right, but that's okay. Um, return on. Is that going to work? Test failed. Still failed. Oh, dev. See? So now... We need to pass, so and the way you can do this too, right, is soup blob equals, so you could just do this, soup blob, soup blob, and then run that. That gives you the argument, uh, positional argument error, and then you could do soup blob over here. Um, just kind of depends on how much you want to stick into the, um, or how far you want to go with the, the idea of like slow incremental progress. That HTML parser and let's find one. What was global? Nope. Global Allen. Global Allen. Why does that look like less code? I got three. Div one, two, three. I guess no, something's different there. Oh, we'll find out. Looks different somehow. Um Run that. Something exploded. Nope, passed. Now here's where I don't know. Oh, here's, okay, so here's the way to do it. So we can just duplicate this method. Like, so I don't, I'm not yet ready to make the other test red. I don't want to make the other test red. But I need that logic in there to play around with. So what I can do, whoops, is not that.
So just for now, return none. So again, I'm just, this is ugly, ugly green, but I'm in a completely separate method. So that's fine. I just need this code in here. Because I don't wanna work with it, but I don't wanna screw around with the other stuff that's already working. I need to be able to get back to green very quickly. And I can always do it just by coming straight back to this. And I haven't messed with my other code. Because it may take me several steps to get here or to get to where I want. And so I don't want to be working on the actual method that's working. Um, because it would be broken several different times with several different tests. And I'm more than one undo away from green. But this is working because I'm just forcing none back. And so right now, what I'm sending it to, oh, def, def, whatever. Um, what I'm sending to it is this global Allen. So if I, so if I take this away, it's going to send back global Allen, which is not equal to none. So now what I need to do, so that's cool. I'm And I'm fine with this test being broken. I can screw around with this because I'm not messing with my main one. Um, so the quickest thing I can think of is, uh, is going to Python RE, whoops. Python regex. Yeah. Blood, sweat, and no tears. Excuse me. No, thank you. Um. So I need to make a new entry here because I keep coming back to this. Compile the pattern and see if it matches. So can you do that without compilation? I don't mind compilation, but it's adding a different line. It's adding an extra line. And sometimes I, I feel like I don't want to do that. Um, Sub pattern. Search. See, those aren't compot. Oh, match one equals already searched. I don't want to capture the match. Oh, so you can just put. Okay, so you can just put it straight in. Um, So again, just to make sure, like, here we go. Test are green. Test fails, and I know it fails because I'm none is not equal to the stuff that's getting passed in. Um, and so I've got the span. So if spans zero dot text, and I'm gonna do shameless green now, actually is what I should have done. Equals this, return none. Test passing. So now I've got the right things targeted. Um, and I can kind of keep playing with this. And I'm, I'm safe down here. Um, but I just, I was about to do the regular expression, but then I realized Easiest thing to do is I know exactly what the thing is. Like the regular expression is going to be for the full file, but like right now I'm working on the one thing. So just do the one thing. And again, this is like shameless green, just getting right, right into it. Um, so now what I can do is I can come up here and if span zero, that text 
equals re dot mat. No, it's not gonna be equals. If re match start of the string start start of the string Allen dot and it's if we don't match that with spans zero dot text return none. Wah, wah. Oh, Ari is not defined. Also, we don't need that anymore. Import. There we go. Test passed. Get rid of this. Right, so from the start of the string, it should say Allen and then slashes escape it and then give me a dot because dot would have been anything. So it could have been Allen W. Smith would have passed this, but Allen W. would have stopped right here and, and failed. Um, so I'm looking, I'm looking for a regular expression in here that started the string Allen with a dot after it. And if I don't find that, return none. So that's why global is freaking out. Because if we did global, it would get through. Yeah. And it jumps down here. Um, and also every now and then I like to do this here. Uh, none is not equal to here. So like I, I know that that's really where that none came from. So if that is there, cool. And then this is where I get into the like the whole thing with like else and if else. I prefer being super explicit about that. So that's the that's where you start. And then what's Python else if? Nope. How do you do Python else if? LF. See, that's the one. Yeah, what, Python's pretty good about being explicit, but that one always gets me. So again, this should pass. And now what I should be able to do is drop this code up in here. And everything should still pass. And it does. And now I can point my test to the production and everything should still pass and it does. Test results for moving non Allen domains. Be a little more explicit about what we're doing here. Why did that just go to four tests? Why not folding? Oh, oh, you can run for. Oh, cool. Uh, more goodness out of PyCharm. Okay, test response, and this should really be test result. Main, basic. Test result with tiered price, and then this one we need to figure out, whoops, what this actually is. Test result with sale. Just to get some a little more explicit here. Would have been better if done that earlier, but hey, still all these progress. So that's it. And so now, and now we can also get rid of our dev again. We can nuke this. 
And so I never, I never went away from green that whole time. I mean, when I was investing in there, I was finding some stuff, but I was only, I was always one step away from it. Um, if we run, if we run it now. Oh, a whole bunch of nuns. Oh, 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 okay. But so this is, this is our output. And again, this is where you, you could have had an integration test that would have looked for and choked on um, the not having Allens there. So, uh, if, I think this will work, my values, print. Does that get us there? Yeah, see, an integration test would be perfect here. But there we go. So it's a whole bunch of Allens. That's cool. And so now we just format the, the text output that we want. Um, what did I do for the other one? Nope. Just make that a table, is that all I did? Uh, yep. Yeah, I just made a table. Um, I'm sure there's CSS ways to do this. I don't know them off the top of my head, and that is not what I'm going to do right now. Oh, actually, wait, we don't even need to do that. Oh, uh, yeah, we need to do that. I was going to say, these are markdown files that are going into my Hugo blog, um, but they need to be, it needs to be a table, and that's how you do HTML format. we go. Uh, class or LN, right? I'm just going to, and again, this should be CSS. I get it. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. There we go. Took a while. Uh, again, could have been done much faster, but this is this is exercise. This is how I practice. Um, I don't do a lot of development at work these days, so uh, this this is how I'm this is how I'm doing stuff. This is how I'm practicing, um, and this is how I'm and I will get faster and better at it as I do more of it. Uh, so let's see. Okay, so that's 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 it for the script, uh, I believe. Uh, not bad at all. We just needed this little blob right here. I mean, that's what does it. Um, and that gets us this blob, which is awesome. So now let's go to Hugo. Um, what do we call the other one? Names dot whatever. Names dot whatever 2020, 2020. So Hugo. New names dot whatever twenty twenty index markdown. Still want to get a better way to do sublime text Hugo. Actually, let's just do this. Um, oh, actually, I'm right there. Names dot whatever 2020. I'll do the former of the other one. Names dot whatever. Should put it. I wonder if we look better if we actually did this. Table, all your junk. Table. Save. Whoops. Oh yes, I will buy Sublime Text soon. I promise. Uh, localist alive. It is names on whatever. 
There we go. There's a list. Oh, you know what I should do? I should sort them. However, so check this out. So I just built this the other day. Alphabetize. So this is my little JavaScript thing that we built the other day that alphabetizes strings. And so now, I could have done that in the Python script too, right? Um, would have just taken a little bit of extra effort, would have kept them as a, had to have them in as, as an array and done some sorting or whatever, but like, again, this is gonna get me there. Uh, localhost 1313. Alphabetized. Very cool. Uh, all right, cool. So that's gonna be it for the main part of this. Um, I'm just gonna write up a real quick blog post with this uh, that you're welcome to hang out for, and that will then do it. Alan.blog, that's not cheap. So at some point I could actually go back and close this, I don't need that anymore, thank you. Uh, Oops, that same thing. Beautiful soup, thank you, beautiful soup. Oh, um. So we're also gonna load up here for a second Code Runner, uh, which is my, it's just a, it's a nice little app for just running stuff in general. Like I'm using PyCharm a bunch now um, but this is nice for quick little scripts. So what I wanted to do was import, so let's do this. User bin environment Python. Uh, so we're in Python 3, import RE. So uh, test, actually, actually like this test string. Quick brown box. So if re match whoops. So matches at the beginning of the string. Okay. Search is through all through a string. So I actually should have used search. run that. So it happened to work because I was at the beginning of the string. Um, yeah, still passed. Okay. Search pattern round test string print found Found it. Else missed it. So if I run that, there you go, found it. So this is just it's a quick little way to, to mess with strings, but so or mess with scripts. I'm not even gonna save this. I just wanted this little piece of code and I wanted to test it and make sure it worked because what I want to do is pi R E. So I just didn't have a clean version of like how to do just a conditional match like that. Um, 
And so I don't have any compile, I don't have whatever. It's just like search, go, boom. Um, I've got, you know, I've got other regular expression stuff. And I'm used to Perl's regular expression stuff still, so it still takes me a little while to figure out, like doing the search and the groups and all the other things with that. Um, find and replace is actually not too bad, right? Uh, yeah, see, that's work in progress. I got a bunch of junk here. Um, I need to get back down to more simple, uh, more simple things. Um, but that's, so this is just like how I capture nodes. Um, and then no, that's fine. Technically I would normally, well, might as well do it, throw it over there. So it's a code block. Um, but then of course when you copy, sometimes you copy and paste, you have to shift it back over or whatever. Um, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, all right, that's gonna be it for the coding. Now I'm just gonna write a little blog post. Um, You know what I really want to do now is I actually want to do a comparison of the prices, but I'm not gonna like. I just want to post this because I'm trying to post more stuff. Um, ah, but see. That's a different script. Um, so, because what what we could do, and I'm gonna do, I'll do this. Um, Yeah, so another script to write would be the one, so you take the two, and I've got them in HTML now, so you take the two HTML tables, you pull the first cell of each one for a key, the second, and then, yeah, so you could make, you could make basically an object and the object would have a key name or a name and then a value for 2015 and a value for 2020. And so you would parse through each list. If the object, if an object with the key name wasn't, wasn't there, the name name, domain name wasn't there, you'd create it and then populate with whichever year uh, value you were processing. And then you would run through the second year and you do the same thing so that that way you would like some 
there'd be three possible solutions. There'd be domain names that had one year in them or the other year in them or both years in them. There wouldn't be any that had zero in there. So it's kind of a binary thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a two digit binary thing, but without the zeros um, because you just wouldn't create one that had nothing in it. Um, and you wouldn't be able to create one that had nothing in it because your two lists always have it, have the first digit flicked up um, or the second, whatever. Um, so that, that's another one. That'll be another one. Let's actually add that to the list. Uh, ideas. Uh, I'll put this one on deck. After all this, I kind of am disappointed that there's not a dot whatever to top level domain. Um, uh, cool. So See how what's the right the best way? Ah, whatever, screw it. Fwins with a W. Sorry, Fwins. The missing eleventh by DJ Williams. Sounds like a chord thing. Um let's see if we list this here. See, I like this better because I'm putting it actually in a sentence and saying like, the thing is here.
That looks good. Okay. Alrighty. I think that is going to do it. Um, I get rid of this. Let's do a little cleanup here. Oh, there's the piece that I was working on earlier today. Like the pieces. It was many pieces. Um, but let me do this. I just want to deploy the site. So I've got Hugo D, which does my deployment. Goes into the Hugo directory, runs the Hugo command to build it. Oh, actually, I don't know what happens if you're running this and that at the same time. Um, I was running the temp server uh, at the same time. I'm just, it's probably fine, but I'm running it. It's 940 pages. I thought there was, mm, I don't know. I thought that, that number was different. So now we just take a look, go to the site, see if it's cleared yet. Not yet. I'm hitting the wrong button. Ah, messes with me, PyCharm, having that control key be in the, be in the main one instead of the Apple key. Uh, 20th? Oh yeah, it's today. Okay. Clean the cache, right? Okay, everything's gone. I did push it live, right? I mean, I just, yeah, it's there. It's for there. Do it! Wow, this is the longest I've ever seen you take a clear cache. This is one of those things where it's not actually. No. Whoa, I've never seen it take this long to clear the cache. That's craziness. Two nineteen, three twenty-six. I wonder if that's when I first started CloudFront. That's probably about right. All right, ready? One, two, three, go. All right, I feel like something's wrong. Oh, 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 shit. Okay. I know what's going on. It, it probably has cleared seven times. Um, content. What was it called? Names dot whatever. It's not a draft anymore. You go D. Let's try this again. Huh, that's on 41. Um, there we go. Some changes happened. And now we shall see. That's how fast the cache is supposed to clear. Names, thought, whatever. Oh, you know what I want to do? Do that. To God. I think it's going to look better in lowercase. Oh, did it go? Oh, it's not going to go. Because uh, the file size is the same. i got to change the file size. file size doesn't change, the sync doesn't send stuff up, so the fact that I just changed the um, case meant that it wasn't going to go. Now it should fire, I think. 
There it is. that oh the index file didn't go because the f the nothing changed on the index page uh that's fine for now it'll it'll change next time i make an update um okay that's cool uh all right that'll do it for the stream um have a good one we'll see you all around till next time be safe be kind uh take it easy and be kind <laughs>